I love New Jersey. I really do. That's so good. You guys play a lot of festivals? Yeah, it's been cool. This year I think it's kind of like a festival summer. Uh, so, yeah, that's nice. But yeah, we, we kind of, I don't know, we'll do whatever. Honestly, <laughs> like, we sort of like, mostly just happy to be here. Yeah. Uh, what has the last couple of years been like for you guys? Because unless I, I could be mistaken, but it seems to happen pretty quickly. Uh, you guys. yeah. You have a lot of buzz I mean, your band. the crazy thing about putting out a record is, is you, you, you have basically control over that record until you release it. Yeah. And then as soon as you release it, you don't have control over it anymore. Yeah. Um, and you can't really predict how it's going to be. Uh, received or taken or, or treated. Um, so we've been really lucky that, that people have responded to it and, and really enjoyed it and that we've gotten all these opportunities. Toronto Raptors. Yeah. Are you a big sports guy? Yes. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Wearing right an Elijah Wan jersey. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but Vince Carter is sure. like the, he's my favorite player, I think, of all time. I really like Alan Iverson. Amazing. I've never seen anybody do the things that he can do. Yeah. Well, you know, um, and he's, I mean, he's getting up there, too. I yeah. Mean, well, I, I, if Vince, if you're listening to this, <laughs> come home. You know, one of the things I think about Vince Carter that's really important is that he put basketball in Canada on the map. Yeah. Vince's impact on Canadian basketball, yeah. I think people like him and Steve Nash, like two oh, of like the most huge. important. Yeah. Um, but you're seeing the that first wave of kids, myself included, I'm 29. Uh, so I'm around the same age as all those guys. Yeah. Um, incredibly less successful. But, uh, <laughs> I don't, you're getting there. Well, you're, you guys are on your way. But like we're, I mean, that that is that first generation. You know, I was going to see Raptors games when Magic Johnson was still playing for the Lakers. Yeah. Like we are that generation that was going to see basketball games when the Raptors first started. So now to like be coming up and to have Corey Joseph on the court, to see Tristan Thompson in the finals, to have Andrew Wiggins, like it feels like. Yeah. The impact that, that started with the Raptors and Vince now is like really coming to fruition. So Brian, you came up with the name Modern Washouts. What can you tell me about that? Um, well, I looked up a glossary of bowling terms, and there were so many great ones. Mm -hmm. uh, but I didn't think being called the Christmas tree or the Greek church or a dime store was as interesting as Modern Washout. And then I added the S. So we are the modern washouts, which, by the way, is a, uh, a spare where you've, the leave is like three pins right at the bottom of the triangle and then two up here, so it's really hard to pick up. So there's five pins left. Five pins left. Modern washout. Right. If we had been washout, it would have been four pins, and there are four of us. That Now that I think about it... Well, being a stickler. Yeah, whatever. The name's cool. It looks great on a shirt. All right, well, go team. Yeah, yeah. Modern washouts. I think this is our year. One, two, three. Modern washouts! We're trying to break 500, I feel like, so there's some pressure on me right now. I'm sort of the anchor of the squad, uh, going last. So this, this one individual game really rides all on these throws. up in San Francisco was doing a league, a weekly league, and he said, we should do that. We didn't know that he's a, you know, 2 220 average bowler. <laughs> yeah. So we said, yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> so after we did that, my brother Mark and I said, this is really cool. We should do something with this. And we immediately thought, let's throw a party in Vegas because bowling and drinking are synonymous because you don't have to be great to bowl and you can be drunk and bowl. And so, and go to Vegas, any excuse for us to go to Vegas, so we thought, why the hell not? We've been talking a lot about um, the role that music has played in the uh, revitalization, say, of uh, 
Asbury Park and its growth as a community, uh, the music scene plays a huge role there. Yeah, I mean, it's funny because Asbury, I see it sort of certain parallels with Vegas because we moved to downtown Vegas about six years ago. Before that, it was just a party that we would throw at this place, Sam's Town, and, and then we expanded it to a few other bowling alleys as more and more people wanted to bowl. When it morphed into this music festival, we moved to downtown, and downtown has gone undergone this transformation where there's about a half a dozen clubs down there now that didn't used to be, just like what's going on here. It was kind of a, a war zone here. <laughs> it's unbelievable the transformations happen here. What do you see the future now of the festival? Where do you want to see it go from here? The necessity was that by just doing one event, there's a lot of bands like, wow, we can't come all the way out there unless we have a lot of money because we've got to fly, we've got to crew. And so, well, if we have a few other shows, it gives you the opportunity to maybe make a tour around it, make it more feasible because we're not this big festival with three or, you know, because most festivals these days are four, five, six stages. They're four or five festivals within a festival. And we're, we're just one. We're just punk rock. We're just going to do punk rock on one stage. We don't, we like to keep it intimate. For me, the whole experience of seeing a live band is to see the band live and feel that energy that you can't get on a video or on a recording. You know? You're still able to keep it pretty intimate for a big outdoor stage. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty good. Can't complain. I think it'll go on for a little while longer. Who knows how much longer? I don't know. Well, I hope, I hope many, many more years. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.